The Lab on Digital Societies. So, uh, welcome to our very first academic podcast in which researchers from Digital Economy Lab explore all things related to digital technology and society. Uh, my name is Marta Kowodziejska and I am the assistant professor at the Faculty of Sociology, the University of Warsaw, and also a researcher at Digital Economy Lab. And my main research focus is on digital religion and mediatization, hence the topic for today. And it is my great pleasure to introduce uh, Professor Kerstin rade anweiler who is a professor of religious studies and deputy spokesperson of the Temki at the University of Bremen, Germany. And her work focuses on religion in times of deep mediatization, mediatization theory, video gaming, and ritual studies. So her recent publications uh, include the Handbook of Journalism and Religion, published in 2020, and Mediatized Religion in Asia, published in 2019. Uh, she is also the editor-in-chief with uh, Professor Xenia Zeiler of Game Environments, a journal focused on video games, religion, and gaming. So welcome, Kerstin. Thank you. Nice to be here. Great to have you. Today, together, we will discuss uh, this recent phenomenon, uh, well, recent more or less, that took the Polish internet by storm. Uh, this was uh, the Catholic Mass organized by the players and for the players uh, of Roblox. So those of you who aren't familiar with the Roblox, it is an online free-to-play kind of a game sandbox and platform developed by US-based Roblox Corporation. And basically, it allows users to program their own ga games, create those game worlds, and play together. Uh, so play games created by other users. Um, and so um, it allows you to create games on different levels of complexity. And interestingly, the Catholic masses um, that were organized, in, you can watch them on YouTube, uh, they, the, these kind of events happened in different countries as well. So it's not just a Polish phenomenon, but there were... Uh, also um, other countries um, or players from other countries that did the same. And these Catholic masses reflected actual places like existing archdioceses, for instance, existing churches, buildings. And also, according to several experts, they were excellent reconstructions of what actually goes on during mass. So everything was in the right order. All the key segments were there, the hymns and the prayers, everything was uh, tip top. So, so to speak. Um, so we can see it in some way, maybe as a form of mimicry, uh, reenactment of sorts, or just play. But here's the big but. Uh, in one of the YouTube channels where you can actually watch those um, uh, services, the caption says the following thing. This is translated from Polish. Our group effort operates on a role play basis where we strive to maintain a native church experience and preach in accordance with the doctrines and spirituality of the Catholic Church. Our mission is to lead the faithful to the revelation of God's love for each person and salvation. Uh, so this opens up, I suppose, a lot of space for discussion. And so my first question to you, Kerstin, and sort of how I would like our discussion to start is to think about the boundary between this kind of role play something that kids would do to reenact family roles or cartoon characters, very similar process. So the boundary between that and actual form of religious practice or meaning making, how can we draw the boundary? Can we draw the boundary? What would you say? Ah, thank you for this really interesting question. And I have to, in a way, reframe it. And because from an analytical or scientific uh, perspective, I would always uh, ask the, the gamers or the players themselves, how would they draw especially the boundaries, if there is a boundary at all? And we can see this also in this old discussion about this is just digital or this is uh, non-digital uh, coming from the digital religion uh, research. And here it was really interesting because the researcher were 
quite more traditional or reluctant to really see, oh, this is this isn't serious business. However, the actors themselves, uh, just for them, it was really serious business and it was a kind of religious practice. And here I would just throw the question, so to speak, not to me, but to the gamers themselves, for whom is it a, re a, a, re a religious practice and why do they perform it within these digital environments or with these uh, gaming environments for what reasons what is a surplus for them why don't uh, for example what is different uh, going to church uh, and, and here we can see also from my own research there is a really variety of different um, um, uh, perspectives in a way because for a lot of gamers it's just for fun it's a kind of role playing for example if you have the so-called middle ages uh, and the story with uh, from the game is settled within the middle ages of course there has to be the 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 nasty and the uh, bad pope who is the uh, power uh, man behind all the struggles and though this is more a kind of decoration so religion plays a part, but it's more like a narrative decoration. However, we have in a lot of other role-playing games uh, and also games that if people are spending a lot of time together, and we are speaking here an average of around four to six hours a day sometimes for people, not only children, but also for older people, then of course also their private interests and their hobbies or their, uh, their what is important for them in life comes also uh, as part of the game. For, and then we come back to this rituals. And I think this is a really fascinating uh, case because I never saw that from really children or younger aged people that they really uh, make a lot of effort to really creating such an environment. And from what I saw, but, but it's, it was only in Polish, so it was a bit <laughs> difficult for me. But the people are really also sitting there, well, a bit quiet and also listening to what the the he or, or the, the the organizer of this event let me put it like this really speak to them and this was fascinating so i would just throw the question back it's a little bit unsatisfaction but it is to really ask them what what do they think about it and well uh, kind of a follow-up question that came to my mind was uh, the issue that this these are very young, young people right and of course uh, I'm not sure about Germany. I hope you can uh, shed some light on that. But in Poland, young generations are the least religious ones. So they practice the least. They uh, consider themselves uh, sort of least believing. Uh, in all uh, recent studies last year, there was this huge publication in Poland saying that Polish youth is secularizing the most. Of course, we have a high or tall horse to fall down from uh, because obviously Poland. Um, but still, it, this was surprising for many people uh, that uh, these were kids who most likely do not go to actual churches so eagerly, right? Or stop going to religious education and yet... Um, when they have the chance to do that online, they are very eager to, as you said, and um, as I've mentioned before, do like a very accurate and serious in tone representation, right? These are not jokes like, ha, 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 stupid pope, stupid priest or whatever, but they are actually doing everything as you would normally in a church. Uh, what do you think about uh, this issue that we have these young people, uh, kids essentially, because they are what, 9, 10, 12, um, who are not so eager to go to church and practice organized religion, but then they are very precise about these online, well, uh, let's call them rituals for now with the big caveat that we don't know. I, I think this was for, for me the most surprising uh, observation because they were really young, but probably this has something to do, I mean, it's a quite recent phenomenon and we don't know how the whole mediatization process uh, due to pandemic situation uh, plays as, or comes in. I mean, what we really know is that uh, also younger um, persons, let me put it like this, uh, probably 9 to, to 12, they found it serious in a way, but the, when they're not forced to. And this is an interesting point because uh, in a non-digital environment, mostly the children are forced to go to church from their parents or from whatever, or the society uh, speaks about this. And if they have the freedom to choose what they want to do, 
then it's really an interesting observation then religion comes in in the most surprising way and of course you can say yes it's really traditional and it's more like a mirroring or a mirror of the uh, non-digital way how a service or a mess is performed however we have to keep in mind that uh, this is not, not uh, that, that it's not something new in a way that especially digital rituals or rituals within a digital environment are really conservative because the environment is so new. So it's kind of to be recognizable as a religious ritual or as a ritual itself. In the beginning, they're really more traditional. And I mean, if you just imagine what you can do, I mean, you have all the options in the world to do whatever you want to do in the digital environment. And then they're coming with these kind of really traditional kind of boring things. And you say, hmm, this is surprising. But in the end, if you can see, in the start, they are really more traditional, but then they evolve into something different because then the people got used to these kind of digital rituals. And probably you can see here a starting point. And for me, it was really interesting to see in contrast to all these uh, polls where we can really see, okay, religion doesn't play such a big role uh, anymore today. However, if people have the freedom and probably we are speaking here about the individualization in contrast to an organized religion, then they are quite eager to integrate it in, uh, as a part of their daily life, so to speak. Probably this would, so I would, I would go into this direction to say, yes, this is surprising, but nevertheless, it, it, it's quite an old phenomena also with uh, more adults uh, that religion plays a part also in gaming or digital environments such as Roblox, but also other uh, things we know. But at the beginning, it's conservative because it's, it functions like a mirror, but then it gets more creative. And of course, it plays a role. Still today, it plays a role. Yeah, so maybe we'll see that this also evolves over time, no? That what started as this kind of very um, sort of one-to-one -one reenactment might end up being something, well, um, unconventional or in some ways customized right to uh, whatever the kids actually uh, want but i what i also thought was that the, the fact that they can do it themselves also is empowering no so because they are not just sitting in the pews and listening to some boring uh, priest or whatever but they actually have something to say so they create their own um uh, well let's say you could say their own version of the ritual, right? Where they are doing it and not just sitting and repeating what the priest says, but I guess it's kind of nice to be on the other side, maybe uh, from time to time. Yeah, and not only nice, I think it, uh, you, you perfectly uh, labeled it as a kind of empowerment. I think it's really important that people empower themselves to perform their, their rituals, even if it's more like mirroring the, the actual rituals uh, within the organized religion uh, settings. However, they have the agency. It's really about the agency, about their own beliefs and about their own religious performances and in this sense also uh, rituals. So it's not only uh, an individualization or a privatization, but it's really about uh, also giving power to lay people or getting power to lay people uh, with this or with these digital uh, tools in a way. Coming back to another uh, question then, because we you talked a little bit about uh, privatization, individualization, but um, can you also see it as a form of public visibility of religion or uh, let's say a different presence, different form of presence of religion in the public sphere, or you would not label it as such, but something else? I think it's difficult to speak about, um, is it, is there a new visibility? Probably there is a new visibility for us researchers <laughs> because uh, otherwise uh, these kind of religious acts or performances uh, were already there, but more in private, but now getting into a kind of public and visible um, environment, also other people can see it. And of course they connect uh, with each other. I mean, this is a big advantage of having digital tools. You can, you, you can be worldwide. You can connect to people uh, from Poland to Germany, to the US or whatever. You can uh, find also people who have the same belief system or have the same interests as you and you connect or you can, you may connect all the time worldwide. However, I'm, I think the whole thing about 
private and visible or public is a kind of problematic shift because it's it's nothing that it's really in the public discourse at the moment. Of course, this kind of uh, the, this specific case studies is now probably in the media discourse because everybody said, "Wow, what an what an interesting case study." However, I'm or, or let me put it like this: I think that religion wasn't uh, was invisible in the time before. Of course, organized religion, but I think. Um, probably in the family and we, we we also know it from the uh, history of religions uh, where we of course as for, for example here in the old jewish and the the, the so-called old testament uh, times that of course we have the the public or the the, the experts uh, opinion because they are um, dogmas or they are they were the one who could uh, write something which were, uh, was preserved all over the time but we can uh, we have also kind of uh, hints that there was a core um, uh, aspect of private religion in a way that of course within the families there were also other forms of ritual um, going on so probably yes it is visible especially for us researchers and probably it's visible again but more in a way that it connects more people who probably beforehand doesn't have or don't have the possibility to get connected but i wouldn't i'm a little bit cautious about uh, now there's a new visibility of religion and i don't think probably it's it, it was always the case but it wasn't so visible for us as resources in a way because we don't have access to how people or how children for example are playing in their non-digital way if they are doing this in a way we, we don't know this yet you've you've mentioned that um if i understand you correctly that this is not well of course we know that this is not just the case of roblox right that these things happened way before uh, the recent media news. Um, so could you say or give some examples of like what you've observed in in your work on religion and gaming for like what kind of cases you or maybe like those that you remember as the most interesting because I know there are different hundreds so we don't have that much time. But um, yeah, there must have been something that stood out or you found it was interesting. So, so probably I can you uh, different or um, can you tell uh, examples from different um, levels or layers, so to speak. So, for example, games were used, and I, I mean, we're speaking of times of deep mediatization, but I would go so far to say it's also a gamatized live worlds at the moment. We can see this also in kind of university, how you uh, learn languages, for example. It's 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 really in the, the direction of gamatization, and also, for example, the religious organization. So we're speaking of the really most conservative uh, when it comes to media usage but they also uh, use uh, uh, games more and more for example in their teaching about uh, different saints or the story of the bible we see in the last five ten, uh, probably five years let me put it like this that there especially in europe uh, the us is a, a bit, bit a different case study uh, with a different case that they are really more engaged in developing a kind of gamatized learning environment for their own believers so this is one small segment and this is really interesting to see what kind of games they are using is it more violent or whatever um, and it's it's more con con conservative in a way that it's really about uh, learning so-called serious games uh, in the us for example this is really not a recent phenomenon but um, especially smaller groups religious groups um, uh, uses or used uh, i think around 15 to 20 years all these kind of different uh, games uh, for proselytion, for example, to, to have missions, uh, for example, in World of Warcraft, one of the, I think, the, the most classical example example for uh, online games, uh, also role-playing games. There are really groups who are just using this game to get in contact with other people and uh, just to show their belief, discuss their belief systems. And we can see it here. It's, it's kind of starting. I know only a case study from Germany, uh, from the Protestant church here that uh, but th these are mostly individuals or individual persons, for example, theologian who are gamers themselves who are using this environment also to to attract 
the younger generation because they know this is their main uh, digital tool uh, or their, their hobby. And if you're looking to the studies, uh, how many people are playing or playing games, then it's a really a logical step. So they're using it, but it's more recent than, for example, than the US. Um, and of course, we have, and, and I would distinguish a bit between these classical uh, games with a concrete mission, you have quests, it, it's really a game, or more or less the digital environments. And I think Roblox is also probably more in a env digital environment. And we have this also in Second Life, for example, this was also a huge success, I think around 15 to 12 years before. Uh, and there we see, interesting as a side effect, the, the churches or religion and prostitution was uh, were the most, uh, yeah, they were the first who used uh, these kind of environments to get people engaged in a really, really different way, for sure. But uh, no, but uh, this was quite interesting. And there, for example, the Anglican church uh, used this environment quite a lot and were really attractive. And a lot of people went there. And then we have, of course, also other like Church of Fools. Probably this is the most classical example, also from the uh, from from Great Britain, who um, just developed their own digital environment. Uh, and there were, I mean, this was a three months um, a test project, and it was so successful, and it lasted for years, and it was totally overwhelmed with their experiences there. So we have a lot of uh, different. Example and probably one last example from an individual person. I did a lot of research in gaming, and what always struck me is, in a way, it's quite similar that if people are spending a lot of time together, they are bringing automatically their private life uh, in. And for example, I did research on wedding rituals, and you can say, ah, okay, so of course, I mean, they are just uh, marrying themselves, and but this was quite earnest. I mean, it was really serious business for them. I did a lot of interviews, and then you have so-called secular um, marriage ritual, but there are also a lot of uh, really classical uh, weddings who were conducted in a church. Also, it was uh, really clear that the person uh, from this avatar who married them was a pastor, mostly from the US because they're more free to do so. In uh, the Roman Catholic context, it's a, it's it's too complicated uh, even now. But for, for me, it was really interesting to see, and this connects me to, to your first case study, that people want to bring their private life in. So just to give you a, a call, uh, some yeah, case I studies. About the... Yes. Church of Fools phenomenon, because it was, I think, one of the first of these, right, that uh, were just, this was a project, and they wanted to see how that goes. And I think eventually there was a um, an Anglican church that actually joined, wasn't there? Yeah, so they had some institutional support. In the case of Roblox, it's um, a different story. The, the Catholic Church in Poland says, this is not the real archdiocese of Wrocław. This is not the real archdiocese of something else. Uh, which is, I think, a, a different approach, maybe to these to these spaces. Um, but uh, why do you think then people, especially young people, we've said something about this, uh, but maybe to just put a dot on it, why people might be interested in doing these things, except for just fun and spending time together. These kind of religious, well, let's call them rituals for the sake of the discussion. Why? interesting point and uh, here again uh, like in the beginning i would uh, say we have to ask the people because i mean we can only observe it is important for them it is and it's a kind of serious business i mean we have also these kind of fun uh, things about ah we're, we're doing a service but we are crashing it and we also observed it in other uh, gaming uh, environments it's more like a critical uh, perspective on religion but here i would really like to ask the people. I, I can't say really seriously something about uh, these specific case studies because I didn't interview them. Uh, but for, 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 for these uh, things uh, I did research on, it was always that this is an important life, but they don't, uh, the, is an important part of their lives, religion, but more as they labeled it, not, not as part of an organized religion. The, so the people, from, from my perspective, what, what I can say is that they really want to be, they, have the, they want to have the power over their own religion. And this is also the point why, um, yeah, why 
also there were power struggles between the organized religion uh, and and these kind of ritual activity or uh, religious activities, however we will call them. Uh, I mean, depending also on the definition of religion. But of course, for for the churches, let's say for the Roman Catholic Church, I mean, it's an uh, it could be a problem because they don't have the power over uh, the organization of these rituals and here now children can can conduct the services and probably a uh, person uh, performing this as well uh, have their, their their kind of agency so for, but this is something for for this uh, which can lead to power struggles or to to struggles or with to to problematic issues with the organized uh, or the church or church's organization. But from my research, it was always the case. Religion is an important part of my life, and of course, if I'm spending a lot of time in these digital environments, it's like spending a lot of uh, time with a sports hobby or something like that, but like football or soccer. Of course, I'm getting. Um, uh, that, uh, close relationships to a uh, relationship to other people and of course then religion comes in yes yeah, for me this is very interesting how um it, it seems obvious but it's actually an important ca case in point so to speak you know that if people if people spend a lot of time in a in an environment whatever that is it's inevitable that they will share parts of their private lives and identities. And if religion is part of that, then obviously um, it will transfer to other contexts. Probably just to jump in one time, I mean, it, it's really the, I, I don't know the case here with uh, Roblox and the children. I mean, it could be also the case that people, especially in this age, are testing their identity, also their religious identity. And this is a, then a platform for them to just experience uh, or to, to test what is right, what is wrong. So this could be because this is a really special age segment we are speaking of. So probably this is a kind of an exception. I can only tell you uh, from my ob observation with uh, adults. So I would, I'm a little bit cautious to just put it uh, exactly on this case study, just to be clear. Oh, I expect, because let me just check, because I have an article from Alatea and basically, they um, had the same observation uh, or about Roblox uh, for the Vatican City State. There is actually a Vatican City State of Roblox where you have uh, religious services in the beautiful um, Sistine Chapel. Uh, and there are also some other countries, I think the US, um, that also have these kind of events um, on Roblox. So. I believe that since this is going to be, or it seems like a kind of a global phenomenon in the sense it's not confined to Poland, there will be some studies sooner or later. Yeah, probably. I mean, what is really interesting um, also, just uh, to, to just give you another example, uh, the churches, uh, for example, in uh, Germany, but also in other, for example, the Vatican started with just a, uh, or with, with representation of their museums, for example, and also their holy um, places as churches, etc. And then they recognized, or the, the researchers recognized, that these originally planned as a kind of uh, exhibition or like a museum, but these places were used also as religious places for people conduct their uh, rituals within this. So it was, I mean, and this is the are also a part. Of course, people are, um, for example, building the Vatican City or other uh, places, but we don't know. Uh, we have to distinguish between the intention of the builders. In a way, is it just for museums or is it just that, for example, we have in Second Life the whole Jerusalem, the old Jerusalem, and, and everything was built. And mostly or the, for, for the main uh, builder, it was really to say, yes, we want to just reproduce it so the people don't have to travel to Jerusalem, for example, but they can see it here. But it does, uh, doesn't or they uh, didn't intend to have any religious motivations. However, the gamers are just using these places for their own religious experience. So I think we have to distinguish here between what were the intentions of those people who had built, who, who built it or the people who attended these buildings. This is interesting in itself. Yeah, very much so. But I guess this would call for an interview, uh, Paul, <laughs> um, which is yeah, everyone listening in, if you want to research that, here is a great opportunity. Um, so um, I have two more questions for you. And one of them is 
more about uh, so coming back to the general theme of religion and games and gaming. Uh, are religious symbols, in, in your opinion, from your research experience, so are religious symbols and meanings a common theme in video games or online games in general? Um, if yes, in what context did you see them? I would say in the majority of games there you can find religious symbols. I mean, of course, not on uh, uh, FIFA, for example, and this is more about sports. But even there, I mean, depending on the definition of ritual, but nevertheless. So, uh, yes, there are a lot of religious symbols. And I think the the main, oh, we always stress as uh, doing research uh, on gaming and religion that you have to be cautious why, uh, wh what is the intention of using these symbols and how were they perceived. For example, in uh, media-focused uh, uh, research on gaming and religion, there was a lot of, and there still is a lot of researchers going on to say, ah, now we have here a, bapt uh, a baptism, for example, or a religious cross or whatever. And here you can see this is religious. And it, of course, also the gamers are seeing this as religious. And I was always cautious and I did a lot of um, interviews and the people didn't recognize these uh, religious symbols at all, for example, or that it, it was just not important for them. So because you have also the gamers are saying, yeah, but this is just a game and this is no place for religious uh, activity, for, for so-called serious business. This is especially the case when this is a short game in a way, it's not an open world. You, you spend a single player, of course. I mean, this is then just uh, for, for giving you the narrative when the narrative is connected to religion. This is often the case, mostly in a more negative way, to be honest. Uh, for example, the assassins or the the Templars or, I mean, the, the typical enemies. If it's not the Russian or the Germans, the Nazis or whatever, yeah, you can really see the, the development of the different constructions of enemies and there's a lot of religious enemies, which plays an important role. You can see it in the TV series as well. So this is one case, but the other in more open world where the people are can or can do whatever they want to do, then more really, I would say, re, as a, their own religious experiences come in. And in other games, it's it's really a kind of decorational aspect, I would say so. Mm -hmm. So they don't really maybe pay attention to that as religious really, if they just play their objective is to kill the pope it doesn't matter i mean there, there's huge huge discussions between different um schools or approaches so to speak so this is a ludic approach and they say yeah, the narrative is useless in a way because the people just click and if the quest has a different narrative yeah but the, the point is to kill uh, a specific number of whatever uh, if it's now um, religious, uh, religiously framed or not. And then there is a, a narratological uh, approach. And this is, of course, takes more consideration. The narrative is important for this. And of course, I mean, you can see uh, that it influences um, per, our gamers as well. Of course, also within uh, their perception of religion as such. And so I think this kind of ties in nicely with um, the theoretical lens. Uh, so you as an expert in the field um, could probably uh, give us some uh, information on the most, in your opinion, or adequate or most commonly used theoretical lens that are um, deployed to analyze religion and games and gaming nowadays. Um, what are the, uh, or the, the, their main focus, if you will? I think the, the field, even if it's small, it's quite diverse. So let me put it like this. It depends on the methods you're using. And of course, uh, also the methods are connected to certain theories. I think at the moment you can observe that the field is broadened and broadened in a way that it's not only on the games themselves, but also I would also uh, I would always call it the game related actors within the field, for example, um, if it's uh, so, so you have the whole franchise about it, how people are discussing, for example, in forums uh, about the game, about their values. And of course, also um, 
for example, in Let's Play videos when gamers are showing how they play the game and then there is a huge discussion. So they're broadening the field in a way it's not only focused on the specific game anymore, but also to people, for example, that are related to, our, for example, the churches also. Um, and I have a nice example here, but it's, it's a quite old game. And one of the churches, uh, the, the Anglican church, uh, and, and within the game, it was a classical shooter and you uh, were in uh, one of the cathedral and you can shoot uh, zombies there. And the Anglican church, uh, surprisingly, wasn't really amused about it and say, ma, this is a problem for us. However, then they and they wanted to sue uh, Sony, uh, uh, Sony and uh, then they just uh, re-evaluated the whole thing because they um, saw that there were a lot of tourists coming because of the game to their churches, because then I mean, this is something you can also observe, for example, uh, in countries like Nepal, uh, because there are a lot of uh, or some games who uh, have the uh, Nepal environment and then people are coming uh, to this. So the, 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 the field is getting bigger for your field of research objects. Uh, so also gaming related persons are coming now into the focus. And the other thing is, uh, but this is more like a personal thing, that religion is also broadened and we would be speaking more of value formations, for example, because what you can observe is that religion as a topic doesn't play such a huge role, for example, in discussions. However, and you can, then you can say, okay, religion is out, then we have nothing to do, <laughs> bye bye. However, what we can observe is that there are a lot of um, uh, discussions about certain values. Why is it allowed to shoot a child or not or whatever? And then, from in, in the back door, so to speak, religion comes in and religion more in a sense of morals and ethics. And this is another, I would say, uh, at the moment, another direction where the a lot of research uh, researching is uh, heading to that it's more that it opens uh, the perspective not only on, re on religion in a for example, not organized religion, but more like it broadening to the value. And of course, not only the game, but the go whole gaming franchise. So I would say these are the two directions in a way. And of course, then all theoretical concept like privatization, mediatization comes in in a way. Um, so I guess um, with cases like Roblox, um, it's not necessarily something new as such, but it's probably another, um, let's say, uh, aspect of the ongoing phenomenon, right, of the religion and religious practices changing maybe their place in society, also in um, sort of human understanding also of what religion is. Um, so I think you might agree that whatever we see it as, it's still a fun, fascinating uh, thing to observe. Um, so um, we leave our listeners with that, with, with, with that thought. Um, thank you so much, Kerstin. Um, my guest today was Professor Kerstin Rade Antweiler from Temki Bremen. Uh, my name is Marta Kowajewska, and we do hope you enjoyed um, this podcast. For more coming series, tune in uh, on our website. Thank you so much. The Lab on Digital Societies. 